Hi, this is Charlie Roy, and this is Sonar X2. Today we're going to be looking at drum triggering using an Alesis SR16 drum machine to trigger the pads in Session Drummer 3. So let's get started right away. Go to Edit Preferences. You can also access this menu by hitting P on your QWERTY keyboard. Go to MIDI Devices and make sure your device is selected under Inputs and Outputs if you'll be doing MIDI machine control. In my case, I have the MIDI Sport Uno. Go to Playback and Recording and also make sure the currently assigned port is checked as well. Go to Insert, Soft Synth, Session Drummer 3. I want a MIDI source and I also want all Soft Synth audio outputs to stereo. What this does is splits up the kit. Every single piece of the kit will be on a different track. The kick, the snare, the rides, and so on. I will have total control over each and every instrument. I also want to see the synth property page and the synth rack view. Initiate loading your kit by clicking on New Program at the bottom of Session Drummer's GUI. Choose your kit from any one of the factory preset kits. In this case, I'm going to select the JB Sonar Kit, John Bonham. At 144 megabytes in size, it's almost three times less the size as the Steven Slate Sizzle Kit. Close the kit selection screen and go to the Mixer section of Session Drummer 3. To configure each drum to go to individual tracks, you will need to change the selection at the bottom of each drum. In this case, by clicking an arrow you can select, or by clicking to the left of the button you can also change the selections of the buttons. As you can see, 2, 3, and so on. Go back to the track view and make sure your input outputs are visible. Go to Input. Select MIDI Sport Uno in MIDI Omni. Turn on Input Echo. As you can see in the picture in picture here, when I hit the kick drum, the kick drum is going off. The snare drum. The closed hat. The open hat. The ride and the crash. Once you have the drum machine properly set up, it's a good idea to go back and check your work. Just verify that the kick drum is coming out on 1, the snare drum on 2, the closed hat on 3, the open hat shares the same track, and so on and so on. Verify that everything is on the right track. The next step is to label all your tracks accordingly. Kick, snare, etc. Once you're done labeling your kit, it's time to get rid of the tracks you're not going to be using. Highlight the tracks that you will not be using, right click and choose Delete for Tracks. This cleans up the track view and gets you ready for your next step, creating a track folder. Highlight all the tracks except Session Drummer Main. Right click, choose Move to Folder, New Track Folder. Label the folder with the name that you choose. By leaving Session Drummer's main out, it makes it easier to recall and look at MIDI data in the track view without having this inside of the folder itself. If you're happy with the kit, but there's maybe an instrument or two that you would like to change, this can easily be done by right-clicking on an instrument. The hi-hat's a perfect example because it has two samples in one. Load instrument. Go to Kits, Hats. Scroll all the way down till you see the SFZs. Choose the Stephen Slate Sizzle Kit hats. These hats have basically um, a light touch of reverb on them and sound incredible. Once you're happy with the kit and would like to recall it at a later date in a different project, save it as a track template. This can be achieved by right-clicking, Save as Track Template. We'll call this Chuck's Kitty. Save. Now at any point in a future project, you want to call the same kit up exactly the way you built it, then one way this can be done is going to an empty space in the track view, right clicking, choosing insert from track template, Chuck's Kitty. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. Till next time, this is Charlie Roy.